Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get on the stage. Otherwise, some of the folks in the back won't be able to see me. <laughs> all right. Can you all see me? Can you all hear me? Okay. All right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this is some of the preliminary work. As of now, um, uh, some of you are probably tired of seeing this slide, uh, but this is probably the most uh, the slide that we are the most proud of. <laughs> uh, this shows the whole uh, edge of field network. Uh, but then more than that, uh, of course, we are proud of our team that works together uh, no matter what uh, season it is. Uh, I'm so new to the team, I got 80% of those names spelled wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so if I say something wrong, just blame it on m the fact that I'm still getting used to it, okay? All right. <clears throat> Um, it is um, very much similar to what Emily showed. Uh, all the sites that she has considered, I, I added a few more sites. This is an average based on all the sites. And what we did, this is how much subsurface drainage is uh, coming out of those sites, edge of field sites, about 10 inches on an annual basis. That is about 20% of the total annual rainfall. About 3 inches of surface runoff. That's about 7% of the total annual rainfall. We do not monitor this part. But that is the part that is used by the plants, the water that's used by the plants as part of evapotranspiration. But then we do know that some of the sites may or may not have uh, lateral or deep seepage as a component. Okay? So uh, I want you to keep this image in mind uh, throughout my presentation. We're talking about 20% of our uh, annual precipitation that gets converted into tile drainage. I know Dr. Brown is here on the back. He doesn't like the word tile drainage. but um, So you'll, you'll see me switching between tile drainage and subsurface drainage. Uh, but about 20%. About five to seven percent of runoff. Okay. Um, here is that that annual figure based on all the averages. Um, how many of you think cover crops will have this effect on that budget? Show of hands, please. Reduced surface runoff, maybe a little bit of increase or no change in drainage, but definitely a reduction in runoff. I saw maybe 10 hands. Okay, let's see. How many of you think it will cover crops actually will increase runoff and decrease drainage? Not a single person thinks that way. I'm glad. How many of you think it will reduce runoff, but it will also affect this component here, the evapotranspiration component? more or less water might leave the field through evaporation. Very logical. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, here is some questions we're trying to answer. Uh, do cover crops increase or decrease tile flow or subsurface flow? Do they increase or decrease surface flow? Uh, what are the implications of that hydrology to the water quality? Uh, there is a couple other questions I'm interested in, but I don't think we can address those at this meeting. Maybe in a future meeting we will have something that looks more at the water budget and really looks at the crop water requirement um, and try to answer whether less water is available for the crops in the later season. Um, all right. As I said, I marked these red, uh, but um, I'll mostly use tile. As the, as the term for subsurface drainage. Uh, surface flow, so uh, the outline is I'm going to talk about just a few of the case studies out of the edge of field sites, and then I'm going to show you quickly some of the analysis based on all sites uh, grouped into sites with cover crops and without cover crops. Okay? Uh, let's see. Okay, here is a summary similar to what Emily showed. Not going to go through all of them, but we have about well, we have 20 sites for sure. 
Uh, about 75 sampling points is what I used. We are close to 100 sampling points. Um, 75 sampling points, if you s monitor those for one year, become 75 site years. Okay? We have data from 2011 to 2018, so that becomes about 400. It's actually 500 and something, 550 or something, but uh, some of the sites came online later. So we have about 401 site years that are part of my presentation. Uh, about 232 site years are sites without cover crops, about 170 uh, site years with cover crops. Okay. Uh, some of the other information is similar to what Emily had, uh, different, a variety of cover crop species, a uh, variety of tillage types. Um, again, please keep in mind these are actual producers, farms, uh, and these are not treatments that we are asking them to implement. So these are existing practices that we are monitoring. Um, here is the individual case studies. This first site um, is this green, green color visible on the back? Probably not much. Okay. Um, so this this field over here is split into two zones. Uh, this zone here uh, had a white mustard cover crop. Uh, same thing here. This whole field was split into a no cover crop and a cover crop zone, and the same cover crop. Uh, this was a uh, a manure rate treatment. So they applied liquid manure early July, about 7,000 gallons an acre. They came back again and I think applied another 7,000 gallons on this side. Um, each of these dots is our tile drainage monitoring points. Uh, unfortunately, these two fields, they receive combined surface runoff. Um, so you cannot really distinguish between the cover crop and no cover crop here. Now this is numbers based on just October through December. So again, remember in late July they had a manure application and these are numbers from October through December. Nitrate load from the field that did not have cover crop, about 17 pounds per acre. Nitrate load from the field that had cover crop, about two and a half pounds per acre and similar, in fact, more nitrate leaving because of the, the higher dose of manure, uh, 26 pounds leaving, but then you can see 2.8, about three pounds of uh, nitrate uh, from the cover crop field. Good, right? That's, that's what cover crops are supposed to do. That's why they are catch crops. All right. Well, DRP, number one, look at the numbers. The, it's 300th of a pound. <laughs> I don't know how many ounces that makes it, but it's, it's a really small number. Just three months. So about 300th a pound per acre from this uh, no cover crop side, and then about 100th of a pound. So it's not, um, it's not very conclusive at this moment, at least. Um, but look at the flow. There was about 2.8 inches in those three months, 2.8 inches of tile flow from this field and about one inch from this field. Same thing here, about two inches of tile flow from this field and one and a half. So definitely less tile flow. Okay. Well, this is just three months. Here is that site. What I did was I actually took the average for the cover crop fields and then the average for the no cover crop fields. So you're seeing average numbers on monthly basis for the years 2017 and 18. So this is a two-year data. Um, that's why you don't see any error bars there. But 9.4 inches is what left. The red color is always going to be the no cover crop site. And the green, if it shows up, uh, the green is about the, the cover crop field. So about three inches of difference. So about three inches of wa uh, three inches less water leaving the field. Um, one thing to notice between 2017 and 18, the cover crop crop stand was significantly different. It was really dense in 2017 and not that good in 2018. 
another thing to remember um, to note uh, especially for this site was i think the cover crop was sprayed on earlier than is that right jed uh, the cover crop it was actually sprayed on earlier than than the other you know regular cover crops november so this was sprayed on in november so it was not really a live crop probably going into january february march uh, it was just biomass probably okay but we're still seeing that reduction it was sprayed on with a, it was killed okay. with a herbicide terminated. terminated yes it was terminated all right so tile flow reduction that's the conclusion for this side good all right this is the second side we have uh, a, a, a field so this is the side that had field uh, that had a alfalfa cover on one side and then the other side of that field was left fallow in 2017 okay so look what happens here the field that was left fallow had low less tile flow than the field that had cover crop that doesn't make sense right all right it didn't make sense to me too all right well in 2016, I looked back, I said, well, this was cover crop, no cover crop comparison. But 2016, both these fields were in wheat. Okay? This site in 2017, it was about 41 inches of rain. In 2016, we had 6 inches of rain, uh, sorry, 37 inches of rain. And the difference wa between these two fields was about 6 inches. So for the less rain in the previous year, they had same cover. It was, the difference was 6 inches. And the difference is reduced by 3 inches here with even more rainfall. Does that make sense to you? So we are seeing some evidence that maybe the, the cover crops affected in a way that the difference between the two sites, these are existing sites. They already have a certain hydrologic relationship. So one site may be producing more flow than other site in natural settings. So that's why uh, at least that difference got reduced, which means there is some effect of cover crops. So that arrow shouldn't be up. It should be probably down, but I cannot tell that conclusively at this moment. All right. Um, if I go at this pace, I don't know if I'm going to cover all my slides. Um, this is a... Another site, um, 2015, I'm not sure what the farmer was thinking. They planted 90 pounds of rye per acre. Um, Twenty seventeen, they got wiser, I think. Twenty seventeen they planted forty five pounds per acre. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Here is the site, here is the field that was planted with that rye, and this is again only the data from 2015 and 17, average. Uh, but the site that had that rye cover crop, about, about 8 inches of tile flow, and the site that did not have cover crop, about 9 inches, so about maybe a 1, 1 and a half inch difference, right? So um, again, reduction in tile flow. Uh, I want to take a detour here. Uh, Laura Johnson yesterday made a comment about um, the fact that, um, especially the watershed scale research that we do, we know that the hydrology kind of drives the water quality, especially the loading. Um, I wanted to see if that actually shows up on one of our field sites. So this is the same site that Emily showed you. Uh, that had and the, the the same site that I talked about just now, the one with the 90 pounds of rye in 2015 and 45 pounds uh, in uh, 2017. Um, again, this this line here, in both cases, this is the field with cover crop. This is the field without cover crop. The line is nitrate load. Um, it starts well. Let's forget about this side, but it starts 2015, 16, 17. Okay. 
and you probably probably noticed after planting that rye there was almost no nitrate being lost from that system um, and then we don't really have any results beyond that point I guess um, all right well let's bring the hydrology so this is the flow at that site and you can see that the monthly flow wherever it goes up the nitrate loading goes up right so it kind of follows the same similar trend as the hydrology right so that's why I think most uh, most of the researchers and um, recommendations are moving towards really the water management aspect of it is because water really drives some of that loading but then something that we see at watershed scales may or may not be true at field scale the hydrology not necessarily drives the loading there are some management aspects that can help you reduce those loads right in in this case it's clearly a cover crop effect right we had similar hydrology but then definitely less nitrate leaving okay this is DRP again same thing uh, in case of phosphorus again we're thinking that well uh, it still shows uh, some um, some of the behavior similar to the the flow curves um, uh, so that that's the main point here all right um, here is another site that had a corn soybean wheat rotation uh, rotational tillage in 2016 um, one f part of the field had uh, wheat we classify that as cover crop it has similar effects as cover crops right so uh, here is the numbers for that again about 0.6 inches of difference I want you to pay attention to the y-axis here it's about one inch total runoff from that field in 2016 uh, tw come 2017 uh, this is how much runoff we had seven inches and six inches um, I'm pretty sure this is not an error in our monitoring program this is 2017 we, we probably saw more rain um, but definitely um, and then you can see the the relationship gets reversed uh, here uh, more water leaving the the cover crop well I made a wrong statement 2017 is different 2017 both fields had some kind of cover okay the site that is classified as no cover crop actually had wheat and the site classified as cover crop had oats as cover crop okay all right let's look at them close uh, this is daily data and again notice that unlike tile flow surface runoff is a very occasional event like it's it doesn't happen happen like every day it's probably just a few events in a year so that's why it's it's difficult to draw conclusions when you have really few days of data to analyze okay so that's another limitation on really drawing conclusions based on these data for surface runoff for tile drainage we may be able to conclude better um, my presentation suggests otherwise in the end okay Wait, 2016 I just wanted to, sh to show how one big event can uh, have a difference the site that had wheat um, kind of limited that runoff but uh, here actually the site ha that had wheat ended up controlling the runoff better than the site with oats okay all right um, that was individual sites we also have some sites that are clustered around in somewhere nearby just a few miles apart from each other so these are three sites one site has long-term uh, vertical tillage and cover crop uh, combination corn soybean rotation and then there is these two other sites that have no cover crops but one site has conventional tillage uh, a three-year corn silage one-year sorghum sedan grass rotation um, and this site has strip till no cover crop corn soybean wheat rotation these two sites are averaged together and this site is on its own again surface flow you can see there is definitely reduction 
but then tile flow, uh, I should not have said reduction, but lower runoff in this side compared to these two. And in tile flow, this is the case where that uh, those other factors become important. We think that one of the sites here um, probably has a contribution from either a additional area or uh, some kind of seepage. So that's why we, we, we're showing these results, but we're not, uh, we're not concluding anything for the tile flow at this mo moment. Um, there is a published study, four-year cover crop study from uh, uh, Canada, Ontario, I think, uh, clay loam soil. Uh, their conclusion based on four-year study was definitely less runoff, more drainage, about one inch difference between the two. So it, the runoff is less, but the increase in tile drainage is either similar magnitude or more. Okay. Well, the question still remains, right? <laughs> so what's the conclusion? <laughs> well, before we go into that, <laughs> more data. This is published, another published study. Um, well, the main highlight here, uh, the, the green lines are soil moisture in cover crop fields, and the red li lines are soil moisture in non-cover crop fields. Soil moisture does play a significant role in this hydrology. That's the main conclusion. Uh, another study. Don't worry about it. The conclusion is, this is a very interesting study, by the way. Um, but they concluded that when you have cover crops, there is less lateral flow, more vertical flow in those sites. Okay, That is very logical. That makes sense. Uh, but this is another reason, I think, um, uh, the hydrology is affected. Also, what are some of the other things that we need to think about? Well, I think the soil temperature plays a major role for that evapotranspiration component. And it's very well known long-term established sites, which have no-till and cover crops, they tend to have less temperature fluctuation. Um, how does that affect the evapotranspiration is a question, and we're going to try to answer that uh, in near future. Um, it, well, especially in Northwest Ohio, we do have some sites that are going to have natural high water table. And that is going to have a major role in that water budget. Okay, uh, So we definitely need to be aware of that. We do have a lot of sites that are adjacent to huge drainage ditches. right? And we do have some sites that have natural seeps. So those are factors that we really need to think about. Well, this is a crazy idea that I just kept thinking about. Maybe some of the folks here in the room can tell me later what their observation is. If there is cover crop, does it capture more snow and rain? Maybe. Does that cause some of the increase in the flow? Maybe. I'm not sure. Yes. I wish Kevin was here. <laughs> In my first week at, uh, at this job, that's the first thing I recommended. Uh, we have had piezometers in the past for some of the sites. Uh, Dr. Brown has done some work. Um, historically, we have done a lot of work on monitoring water table. Uh, but unfortunately, none of the edge of field sites at this moment have piezometers. Uh, but there is. Um, conversation going on uh, about getting those installed, at least at some of the sites, because they are not truly edge of field. They go in the field and interfere with the operation. <laughs> so we have to be very careful. So that's, but thank you. That's a good point. Uh, we are thinking about that. That will really help us uh, answer the question. How much time do I have, Greg? Ten minutes. Ten minutes? Eight minutes, OK. Well, I'm doing good then, OK. Um, all right. Um, is there any questions before I move on? Yes, on the back, Jim.
Yes, uh, the question was, uh, what's the tillage types? And I think, Jim, you missed my first slide. The tillage, yeah, we have a variety of tillage uh, types that are represented in these sites. Uh, some of them are um, conventional till, rotational till. Uh, some of them are strip till, vertical tillage. Uh, some of them are no-till, but I don't think there is any site that is truly long-term no-till. Uh, Jed, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, but um, but we do have a representation from different tillage types, and that's. I think I will show that a little bit in my next part of presentation. Okay. Well, I thought well, maybe we can get some signal out of the all that you know 400 site year data. I thought maybe we'll get some signal out of that if we just divide it into cover crops and no cover crops, okay? So this is the analysis based on all the sites combined and grouped together based on cover crops, no cover crops. Um, for the simplicity of it, here is a complicated figure. Um, the flows, what we're doing is we're essentially taking only the top 40% of the flows, okay? The highest flow, highest daily flow. So you rank all the flows for that site in a descending order, and you take top 40%. The working hypothesis here is, well, maybe cover crops show some result in terms of controlling these high flows, okay? All right. Here is... All the sites without cover crops, all the sites with, uh, with cover crops combined together for tile flow, surface flow, median tile flow for sites with cover crops is greater than the median tile flow for sites without cover crops. Okay? I need to... Um, I need to think about my wording. In my case, I say everything in my language and then translate it into English. So sometimes I may or may not convey the right message. Okay. We have, these are, the box plots are based on um, individual sites. So each, it's basically, these are individual sites that are represented. But yeah, so median tile flow is greater in sites with cover crops and uh, than sites without cover crops. Similar result here. For case studies, we saw that the surface runoff was less, right, in cover crop sites. But when you take the average, <laughs> both tile flow and surface runoff show that they are greater in cover crop sites. So this is where the inter-site variability plays a role. We have sites that are very dominant in terms of their flows that are drawing those means or medians uh, in that higher direction. So that, that is the preliminary conclusion at this moment. Um, there may be something more uh, we haven't explored yet, but that just, that just looks counterintuitive to me, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I, what I, that was based on the average daily flow. All the day, daily flows combined together. If we group them into monthly flows, do we see the same thing? Well, let's, well, this is for surface flows, tile flows, a lot of variability, right? But then only a few months, like May and December, well, one of these months show a lower number. Well, let's just combine them together and look at it, about 11 inches more tile plus surface flow than uh, 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 in cover crop sites than in non-cover crop sites. Uh, one possible explanation for this, well, let's look at the annual as well while we're here. Uh, median, again, no cover crop site, cover crop site. This is getting redundant, but you can see the median is high. And uh, we think, well, this is, again, this is preliminary about the sites without cover crops, the average precipitation on those sites was about 34 inches. 
and uh, the average precipitation on cover crop sites was about 35 inches. And if you look at that number here, that's about one inch. That does not mean that that's the rainfall explains everything, but that could be possible explanation. Okay. Uh, okay. Coming back to this figure, this is my conclusion slide. Hopefully, all right. It is the no cover crop sites, uh, two inches of runoff, nine inches of uh, drainage, two and a half inches of runoff, eight inches of drainage. Okay. <laughs> yes. So, essentially what we're saying is, well, this is site averages. Again, this is, again, site averages. Increase in, not increase, I should not say increase. I told myself several times. It's greater surface runoff in cover crop sites than no cover crop sites, and then less lower tile flow in cover crop sites than no cover crop sites. This is site averages, okay? All right. Uh, is it just cover crop effect? No. This is what we're looking into. Uh, Short-term cover crop versus long-term cover crop. Uh, cover crop, how, I mean, you know, how good the stand was. There are years when we have good establishment. There are years when we don't. Uh, how does the tillage affect? Jim, your question. Yeah, we're going to look into that. Um, here is my summary. I'm not going to read that. I don't know if I left any time for questions. How do we measure surface runoff? We put a big flume uh, at a point where most of the surface runoff from that field is likely to accumulate and leave the field. So that area is, it's, it's a big construction project that these guys can definitely help you explain. I think Phil is not here, but Jed and others. Uh, but uh, essentially it's an H flume or some kind of flume that we use to monitor, uh, collect the runoff and then monitor. Yes. One of the things we've always thought is with cover crops, with, with cover crops we've always thought if, if there are, are larger pores that roots and things help to become a biological valve in those, in those larger pores. So you don't have macro flow bypassing a lot of things. Have you guys and gals looked at that to see is, is that actually a process or is that something that's uh, more wishful thinking? As far as I know, Mark Williams has looked at it. Um, I cannot tell you more details beyond that, but I know that Mark Williams has uh, definitely looked at it. Uh, one more comment I wanted to make on the question about plot experiments, controlled experiments, uh, because this relates to the sites that do not have any control on the factors. Uh, I know that Rafiq has done some work, uh, Rafiq Islam down in Piketon has done some work on, at his plots, the, those are drained plots, but they have uh, anti-seep color, uh, you know, the seepage is controlled around those plots. It's a good thing to look at those plot studies um, from the initial establishment of that practice, but it's important to see how it really works out out in the field. So, yeah, definitely we have some plot experiments. All right, thank you.